So Jill, I see we have a lot of guests. I'm assuming all of our guests are here for the 20th Street Ball Field Master Plan. Is there anybody here that is not here for that? Okay, so I'm gonna and assume- I saw Sam Lowe raise his hand. Oh, did you Sam? I'm sorry, I didn't see you raise your hand. I'm just here for the whole meeting just to see everything and see your expert leadership, Chris. Thanks, Sam. Put me on the spot. So, um, okay. Uh, act before we get to the action items, uh, one of the things we would like to do is, Jill, did you want to move 20th Street before even action items? I lost you again. Oh, there you are. No, I, um, it's it's up to you, Chris. Um, I think the action items, the oath of office, will need to take place prior to any of the um, the discussion or the any voting. So okay, so let's we'll go through our action items. When we get to discussion items, um, I'm just going to make a proposal. We move the 20th Street update plan to number one, and uh, shuffle everything else down to two and three, so that the folks that are here for that we can get that that uh, through. But it's hey Chris, this is from, Tina. Oh. This is Chris who runs the park store. I'm, what was what was that, Marcus? Uh, nothing. Sorry, just saying the, the you're running the park store. That's it. Oh, okay. Well, Chris, can I can I ask? Um, can I make a recommendation because one of the action items is to. Um, uh, nominate the artist and for the um, the water feature and maybe we put that maybe we move 20th ball field before that we can yeah we can do that after the 20th ball field yes yeah that's a good idea Tina thank you so let's go into our first action item the the big one of the night for us as a park board is recently um, our council voted to expand our park board by two members. We had one open spot um, and then we decided to add two extra positions. Uh, two of these three members I know quite well. I'm excited to have them on, but we need to do the oath of office. And that would be for Mr. Connor Davis, Connor. Um, Brian, and I'm sorry, Brian, I'm going to mess up your last name. Is it Heiger? Yeah, it's Heiger. You got it. Oh, wow. I got it right. And Mr. Colton Whitworth. So before we can have them voting members, we need to have them uh, take the oath of office. So Kelly, it's all you. All right. Great. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I thought it might be easier uh, to see the words as you repeat them. So um, congratulations to these three new uh, board members. They've been really patient as we've gone through the process to try to expand this board and credit to all of them because they were so good that that's why they expanded the board so we could have them all. So i um, happy that they're going to be part of the, the park board going forward. So if I can get the three of you new members to raise your right hand and repeat after me. So I state your name. I, Brian Iger. Davis. I, Colton Whitworth. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And laws of the United States and State of Washington. Laws, laws of the United States and the State of Washington. And the ordinances of the City of Lake Stevens. And the ordinances of the City of Lake Stevens. This is the hard one. And that I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially perform and discharge the duties of Parks Board member. Perform and discharge the duties of Parks Board member. According to the law and to the best of my ability and understanding. According to the law and the best of my ability and understanding. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. All right, that's my part, Chris. So I'll turn it back over to you. Have a good meeting, you guys. I have to run to a Veterans Commission meeting now. So oh, great. Thanks, Kelly. Kelly. Thank no you, problem. Kelly. Have a good evening. Bye. 
So to um, uh, Connor, Brian, and Colton, welcome. So uh, all three were gracious enough at our last meeting to join. So um, Brian, one of these days, I'd like to try to meet up with you some way, somehow, or even a Zoom. I've already met with Connor and Colton and um, kind of catch you up to a little more speed. So um, one of these days, we'll, we'll hook up. Absolutely. So can we get the approval of the board meeting minutes from March 8th? Has everybody had a chance to look at those? Yes. Is yeah, there... I do have something though, Chris. Okay, Tina. Tina. Um, uh, so, so it says that um, in the end that it says that there's a statement for, that the mission and vision statements for the park board, Marcus's comment, and then when I read the staff report that it's for incorporation into the um, parks division. So I think we did say park board at the meeting, but I don't think that's what we meant. I think it's for the parks division. And it says, um, says it in Marcus statement and there was one other place I don't have it in front of me, so I can't tell you. But I didn't know if we wanted to clarify that or keep it as we discussed. I, I don't, and I miss that, but I don't, we, this, is, this is a process that's not gonna happen in, in one night, Tina, um, at, as we move forward. And we'll discuss this a little more. I, I don't think that's. Um, you don't think it's, it just was confusing to me as to who's this vision and mission for. If I could. But if, it, if, it, if everybody's fine with it, then I'm fine with it. Yeah, go ahead, Jill. So I think that the purpose of the, the vision and the mission was indeed for the parks division and also for the park board to work on um, setting that vision and mission that will guide um, the division and also the decisions under the park boards. So it's really, um, you know, for the vision, it's an aspirational statement of where we want our parks um, division to go and to help guide our decisions and, um, and help unify um, the park board, their vision along with uh, staff and the city council, but the park board would be working on the mission and vision for the division. And then um, we would be seeking input from uh, the Lake Stevens city council as well as um, administration. Thanks, Jill. So can I get a motion to accept? I make a motion to accept. Second. I a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstained? All right. All right, we're gonna skip over action item three and we're gonna move right into discussion item number two, 20th Street update. Uh, Jill. Uh, my name is Jill Meese. I'm the Parks Planning and Development Coordinator for Lake Stevens, and I'm um, uh, presenting this with Russ. He's our Community Development Director. So um, in anticipation of that West Side Trail construction, which is the first phase of the Master Trail Plan rollout, we're looking at master planning, the trailhead design, and the park where the 20th Street ball fields are currently located. So um, the end result for this particular uh, piece of property is to have the dog park, picnic areas, landscaping, paved parking, in addition to those uh, practice fields that we already have out there that Lake Stevens Lacrosse has been using. So a little bit of history, um, staff introduced the park concepts to the city council at, uh, in September at their retreat. <clears throat> as part of a discussion for future capital improvements uh, the and the corridor needs for the 20th Street sub area. Three alternatives were shared with the city council 
and they're uh, and then further developed based on the feedback from the community and input at the um, September 17th, 2020 public meeting. The following alternatives were presented to the city council on September 24th and the park board on October 12th of 2020. Uh, if you remember there, the three options that were presented, option one, assume the acquisition of the Quail Court open space tract and a full build out of the park, additional parking, restrooms, picnic and play areas, practice fields, off leash dog areas around uh, or along the multi-use path, and then soft trails as well through, um, uh, through some of the areas on the westerly side of the upper parcel. Option two, um, provides parking for the community transit. That was part of a shared transportation um, uh, on that site. And it assumes also the acquisition of the quail, the quail Court open space tract with a variety of recreation amenities, including additional parking, restrooms, picnic play areas, practice fields, off-leash dog areas, along with multi-use path and soft trails. And then option three offers a compact build out of the park with the quail court open space tract that includes additional parking, restrooms, picnic and play areas, practice fields, off leash dog areas, along with the multi-use path. At the January park board meeting, staff brought examples of equipment forward and the park board recommended a natural feel and elements and dog park features. Due to the overhead transmission lines, materials, height, and vegetation limitations were considered and incorporated into this draft design um, that is before you tonight. In this design, the critical areas are protected um, just up to the areas of the existing disruption and existing impacts. The preferred alternative is kind of a hybrid between the two um, options two and three. It has a compact build out that allows for a focus on construction of the park board's preferred elements with limited funds, rather than a protracted effort to acquire additional property. It also reserves space in the Southern portion of the property for future transit parking. And um, which is another well-defined city need to make the 20th street corridor successful. Um, attached is the draft trailhead design. We also had a meeting with the Quail Court property owners uh, last year, and they had concerns uh, specifically as it uh, regarding parking in their area and people accessing the open space area um, for that purpose. And it uh, they have very limited parking on site. They also have some traffic uh, concerns of people pulling down their area. It's a dead end street and it uh, is not safe for folks, you know, to turn around a lot of the time. So with the draft design on the city's portion as it borders the Quail Court property, uh, we have put some, some vegetation in that area to detour um, people from parking in their area in their neighborhood and then walking over. Um, we're, we're definitely open to um, obviously hearing the feedback from that neighborhood and then also looking at other ways to really um, deter the parking for that use. So that includes opening up our parking lot with a really clear signage as to the parking area, making the area flow from our parking lot into the uses of that um, parcel and then even possibly putting um, some type of vegetative barrier or others uh, considered to, to really um, define the park and make it um, less convenient for people to just access through the um, Quail Court neighborhood. So with that, um, I would love to hear some feedback from the community as well as the park board on um, the draft design that uh, is presented before you. Looks like Carl. I have a Carl. question. On the size of the dog park, is it larger than the one we're using now? You know, I haven't scaled. It out. I would have to. Um, I would have to scale the one at uh, at Cavalero, and I can definitely bring that information back. I think they're based on it. Looks like this one would be a little bit smaller. Oh, that's that's too bad. Yeah, there are some uh, some 
some constraints on the site, as we know, with the critical areas that exist, and then also with the um, uh, just with the shape of the parcel and where the trail alignment already exists. Yeah, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. Actually, this is Chad Hobby up in Christie's screen. <laughs> oh, uh, there. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right, Chris. Hey, so we live on uh, 88th Drive, which is uh, our backyard buffers the power line easement. Mm -hmm. And the way your guys' plot is right now, we're going to end up having a dog off leash park right on, on the other side of our six foot fence. My, my question is to you is why is it that you guys decide to put an off leash dog park on the backside of our property when it'll be the only off leash dog park in Snohomish County that is by a residential community? That's my question to you. Like one of the questions I have for you. So you're going to basically take our quietness that we have, the reason we bought this house, and disturb it by allowing the public in to the Bonneville Power Easement line. So the parcel that's in question um, that you're referring to is the the city's owned parcel for for park use purposes, okay. and we are proposing to do a vegetative barrier. Um, that would be a landscape area between the two. Um, and then the, 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 off you, uh, the off leash dog park use is, um, is something that's important uh, to, to have in the city. And also it has been um, a, a priority for the city to, uh, to construct that. Now, due to the site topography and the critical areas of the site, um, it is, that is where it's been cited to minimize our impacts to critical areas and, um, and the usable portions of the property. Okay, why is it that we're moving a dog park from an area like the man, like Carl stated that the area that you're moving it from is actually a bigger area than the area you're moving it to and, and is now gonna impact the neighborhood that is around the area, my neighbors, house is basically buffered right up against the back line which means she's gonna have, literally have dogs right in her backyard did you guys consider the impact of the neighborhood that's actually next to where the dog park is supposedly going to be well, that's, uh, part of the purpose of this meeting is to hear the uh, the public feedback from the community uh, and then also the you know the fencing of that area of course, you know, the city is, it would, it would be a separate use. It, the dogs really would not travel into someone's yard unless there was you know, a function in the, in the fencing. Okay, I got, I got two more questions. I don't mean to take up your meeting. Um, my second question is, is this going to be put to a public or to a uh, Lake Stevens vote, whether it goes through or not? Generally the uh, Lake Stevens Park Board has the public meetings and where we uh, get the public input for the use of the property and the design of the property. And then it moves forward into um, it, to our city council. So okay. This not typically yeah. being put out to a vote. So the public, so the neighborhoods around it that is actually gonna physically impact, basically have no say in what you guys do in the city then is what I'm getting out of this. Because you guys don't realize in the city the impact that we're already feeling from the homeless and everything else that are coming down these encampments. I've had my back fence torn down twice already, and there's not even a trail back there. And now you guys are going to allow the public even more access to our private area in our backyard that all these houses along 88th Drive bought because of the easement and the quietness of the power line easement. And now Lake Stevens is going to destroy it. I do have a problem with that and why you guys aren't putting it to a public vote. Appreciate your feedback. Hi, good morning, Council. My name is Kayla House. First of all, I just want to say congratulations to Connor Davis. Connor, I worked with you at North Lake. I think you're a member, so congratulations. Um, I so I live in the Quail Court, obviously. I think you guys remember me from last time. A few requests that I had uh, pertaining to safety was that a slow sign be put up or possible speed bumps and those were 
rejected. Um, I did call the city about a month and a half ago to try and get somebody out here again to put up slow signs. Since 20th has been developed now into four lanes, the amount of traffic that we've had, the amount of people that speed down these roads because they think it's a side road that they can just go down real quick to offset the traffic that's coming onto the trestle. Lake Stevens is being developed at a rapid rate. And I don't think that the people who don't, don't understand. Um, and so the biggest thing for me, I live on the opposite side. So I don't live up in the cul-de-sac where, you know, there where the dog park is right alongside but I do live in this neighborhood and I'm just saying the amount of traffic that we are continuing to get and you're saying that you will put the vegetation up I just it's not deterring people now and now we're going to publicize it and now we're going to make it even more accessible I understand but I went I've been to the other dog park just right up the road I don't I guess I just don't understand the movement it's been fine with the kids that are practicing lacrosse, the parents have been super respectful. They've been parking in the parking lot. We haven't had a problem in that instance, but the increased traffic, the um, pretty much lack of respect for the people that continue to go down and use these trails for alternative purposes. I know that you guys don't have any you know, control over that, but my biggest fear is that if this is gonna continue to be put, Fourth, if this plan, basically you're telling us that the plan, the motion is moved and it's gonna happen. So us as homeowners, like part of that is our property. And I feel like we should have some say cause we own some of that property. So <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at with this whole thing. I'm just kind of uneasy with the amount of increased traffic we're gonna get not only from people, but cars and just all the things that are possibly going to happen that we already see. There are a couple points that you that you brought up. We do know that um, when you activate park properties, it does uh, reduce unwanted behavior in park properties. So um, the more eyes on it, they it does help with um, as far as the surveillance and, and keeping some of those um, those unwanted behaviors away. Um, the parcel of um, of Quail Court is omitted from this plan other than the area that he's already that the trail already exists on and there is an easement on across the open space for um, recreation purposes um, so uh, that is um, as far as the the ownership question that you had for the property um, the other use as far as advertising the property um, if it is a Lake Stevens Park property there is a property. There, there is a duty to activate the property for public use if, if we own it for that intended purpose. No. Can I, Chris, this is Tina. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Tina. Thank you. Um, Jill or Russ, so how long have we, the city, own this piece of property and and then you bought your house and when we purchased this property or or had this property how long has it been since we've decided that we were going to develop it for a park sorry the property was owned by snohomish county and transferred to the city of lake stevens upon annexation approximately 2010 and it's been a planned park development site for at least five to six years. Thanks Russ. And prior to the city's um, ownership, the, the recreational use of the ball field on or the practice fields on the property has been a longstanding um, use for the property. I, I don't know exactly when the easement was drafted, but I wanna say somewhere in the eighties. I can research that for you though. Would you, consider putting in any signs saying like no parking no uh, parking in this neighborhood no park access yeah like no just so that if people come in they immediately see like oh I can't park here if I want to access the park just because there are I mean we live on 88th and there's a lot of kids that live there um, including my son who 
uh, is really young. And if there's a lot of cars coming through thinking, oh, we can park here, that I think that is, you know, it, it'd be good for people to know over time, like, hey, this is in a neighborhood to go park in if I want to go jog the trail or take my dog out kind of thing. Just a sign to let people know. Yes, and we have spoke with our public works department and the mayor as well, um, was on a meeting with the city council liaison and the park board um, with your neighborhood prior. And we do know that this is a pervasive problem and we have um, talked about different options from traffic calming and definitely, you know, signs stating no park parking and, and things of that nature. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. I'd like to real quickly, um, and I'm sorry, it's labeled Christy on the screen. You had three questions and there you are. <laughs> you had three questions and we got two. I wanted to make sure you didn't get cut off on your third one. No, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just hearing really, everybody's input. We didn't really get an answer. We just got a thanks for your feedback. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Chris. Yep. Okay. I have questions. Okay, can we go with is it Carrie Russell? It is Carrie Russell. Thank okay. you. Um, so first of all, I, I apologize for being woefully unprepared for this. I did not see a schematic, so I'm I'm operating at a loss, I guess. Um, however, I do have a couple of questions just with the structure of the park. So um, you indicated you're going to put some vegetative barriers. Are is there? Did you mention also, Jill, that there was going to be some kind of fencing? between the, the quail court space, basically, and the space that you're using for the park? I think that where we had discussed fencing was where that access point belongs to, where that utility access. And as long as the utility companies are amenable to using the, the access that we provide through our parking, we can look at ways of, of, um, of shutting that off. Okay, and then my other question is, again, I haven't seen the schematic. We have a kind of important like drainage area. I, of mm -hmm. course, back up right against the ball field. So we have a really important drainage area right behind our fencing in between um, you know, our property and the, the trail that is, exists now. Is that going to be tampered with? No, as this um, draft or this alternative is, um, is drafted, and I can share my screen, to show it. I do apologize. I didn't know there was a, a plan. <laughs> no worries. If you can see this area north, of course, um, being on the where the off leash dog park is, the quail court open space area through here, we're not um, proposing any changes to that between okay. the existing trail and the parcel line. So the All right. Trail would be this. Oh, I don't know if you can see the first here as well, but it's where the existing utility access road is. Okay. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Bruce Houston here. Is it okay if I make a comment? Yes, go ahead. Okay. So I live right on the corner of the cul de sac. And uh, my observation since we've been here is at least two times you've had drug overdoses right across the street where police oh. have responded. And several times I can look out my window and uh, see people parked across the street. I think part of that is because uh, on the west side, there's only vegetation. There aren't houses over there. People pull into there and do various things. The police aren't always called because there isn't somebody sitting there with a needle sticking out of their arm. So my other comment would be the easement that used for utilities. Um, just recently, people park up on the sidewalk and they take their dogs through that easement down to the field. I spoke to yep. one person the other day, I was mowing. I take care of the property and I, I rode up to him and said, you know, there's a really nice parking lot right over on the corner there for access to this whole park. Very indignantly, he told me, yeah, and there's parking on this street too. Well, that's not just one person's attitude. 
anybody that parks on the street kind of knows that um, the neighborhood the neighborhood can't control and keep them away. What I'd like to see is that easement blocked off, and I don't mean with just a bar, but blocked off so people cannot park on this side and either take their kids over to practice or take their dogs into the park. Um, think of your own homes and what I'm saying and put yourself in our situation. We have people from all over that just pull in their park to do various things or they go straight to the park. One other little point I'd like to make. When my daughter played soccer, we several times went up to South Burlington to Skagit Fields up there. The fields are bigger, but there's four times as much parking up there. Yep. When we would go up, the parking lot was full, and so were most of the streets into the residential areas. This is a big deal. And police are not going to patrol this area mm -mm. other than driving by. And right. I just want to emphasize that the pe people will pull in here and do whatever they want to do on this street. We need to block that easement off. Yeah. Thank you. With the, with the Quail Court property, that is your property along that um, along your neighborhood and we can definitely work with you as as far as looking at options to make that, that area you know less inviting or um or look at at you know rerouting the utility we we're we're willing to have um that open conversation but the the property the the area at this point that i'm aware of that the utility access uses um, that would be on on Quail Court's private property and also um, with the utility access easement. So, like I said, we can look at, um, you know, offering them access, which will remain um, open through our area because with the trail being paved, the utility access trucks will start using that. <laughs> look at, at um, you know, a fix to uh, deter people from parking on the street and using the park. Jill, if I can add a distinction um, really quickly, um, the, the easement we're talking about, it's Seattle City Light, Bonneville Power, other agencies that are not the city of Lake Stevens, that's their easement and the city um, can't change their, their easement right. That is a, a right that they've established um, and they have in perpetuity. So the city of Lake Stevens does not have control over that, but we hear your concerns about the parking on the street and we, we've heard those. And as we get to a final plan, um, we will incorporate what we can to help with control of traffic and parking signage, but the city can't close off a public road and we definitely cannot close off this easement that we do not control. Hey Jill, real quick, you said, you said that um, that easement was owned by the quit court and um, for utility easement. So if it is owned by Quail Court, then we can put up a chain link fence with signage that says, uh, if they need access to contact property owners at this phone number. So the, the parcel in question is owned by Quail Court. And then there is a perpetual easement by from the utility companies across your property. So that would be an agreement that you would um, come up with with the utility companies that has that easement. Okay, so I would have to contact the utility company if I wanted to put up a chain link fence across that road. And as long as they were in some kind of agreement, as long as I put up a phone number and we were out there right away to open up the fence, um, then they would be okay with, okay, that's all I wanna know, thank you. I, I have something to say about that, uh, about the fence. The problem with that is that part of the road is on now the city's property and part of it's on Quail Court. Just so you know, I don't know if you've been back here at all um, and checked it out or like noticed from on the map from where their property lines is. Because I think that's a great idea too. I'm back here where the other power tower is. But it's like it, it, the property line goes like through parts of the road 
that would be fantastic. But um, um, I also have to say about, I do want to say something about the dog park area and ask about that while I'm, you know, got a chance to talk. Um, what Were you guys want it against the fence of everybody? How come you guys don't want to put it where everyone already walks their dogs in the big loop over there? So if I'm understanding your question correctly, um, the area that is to the east of the existing trail is the only area on that parcel that's not that doesn't have areas. So there is a looped trail that um, that's that floods for a large portion of the time mm -hmm. on the west side. Well, I don't know if you've actually been back here. So there's a pond that comes every year. And then where everyone walks their dogs, it gets muddy, yes, but it doesn't flood. Like, I don't know if you've been back here and actually, like, seen it for yourself. And the road floods out every year. Are you guys going to uh, pave it or something? Like, how's that going to work? Because it floods every year. It has to be, like, almost refilled with gravel. Yes, the, um, the utility access road and its alignment have an asphalt uh, lift put on it is what the um, trail profile is proposing. Okay, because I saw your map before and I saw that you were possibly thinking about making another like trail if you couldn't use the quail court road, but that goes like through the pond. So I, I guess I'm confused about how that would work out too, because that pond has like so much wildlife, you know, blue heron, uh, ducks nest back That's there. Lot. Like, so I, I don't understand how that would work. At this time, the, the trail alignment would follow the existing utility access road, except where it, it came onto the city's property and then joined up with the parking lots. That would be an addition. Okay, so you're gonna raise that up. Uh, so you're gonna raise the road right there where, and, and pave it then? Is that what's happening? At this point, the engineering is to add a asphalt lift to the existing road, but not really necessarily raise the grade. It would just be the thickness of the asphalt and, oh. and some prep work. Two feet underwater. I, okay, yeah, because yeah. it's usually a couple feet underwater right there. Um, okay. Something to add on to Hillary, she's my neighbor, yeah. is I'm still trying to clarify, Chris, is why is it that we're moving the dog park from a perfectly good area that is large for dogs away from a residential community, tucking it into a residential community? I realize that I so Jill time. said, we'll go ahead and, you know, it's nice you told me this, but there's no answer to it. The park that we already have established for dog park is away from residential areas and now you want to tuck it into a residential area i still don't i'm trying to clarify that chris why that is cavalero property where the dog park currently um exists they're looking at alternatives of um additional park use at that point at that um site and so the dog park would need to find a new and this site is um, is relatively close and and can hold that. And so another concern with that is how you have the park that you're going to put in. For, so I'm assuming people will be here with their children, and then people have to walk by there with their dogs to get to that. I feel like that is a safety issue for children that maybe you're already afraid of dogs or do not the well behaved dogs. Um, I know there's an issue with it over at Cavalero. It's well, like people are going to have to walk through all the other public areas to get to the park, tuck way back here. I can join in. Hello? So, can I ask a quick question, Jill? Hello. Tina again. Yeah, go, go ahead, Tina. Thanks, Chris. Um, and Cavalero, am I correct that it's uh. not? city owned at this time that's correct it's owned by and so we don't have control over what's going on at, at that we have some joint we probably have some input but we don't have control right that's correct bullshit bullshit oh come on can we be civil yeah so i think that's part of the problem is that isn't it state owned 
right so now? Cavallaro, Cavallaro is a county park and, and county. they're the ones that run that park. And I mean, they, they've been gracious enough to let us give our input on it, i.e. the skate park. Um, but that's that's a that's a county county park that's not city park so essentially we're trying to make a dog park within our control correct okay. correct and i think we have uh stephanie wanted to speak yeah stephanie hello hi i'm here um my next question is um since we um, homeowners on the Whale Court own a little bit of piece of property back there. Um, you know, I, I, I take my dog back there every day, every day, and every day I'm walking through that field, and uh, I see a lot of people back there with dogs off leash, and I yell at them. I'm like, you know, this is uh, a lease law order and nobody participates and um, it, it's really concerning to me that kids walk down our street to get to 20th to get onto a bus to get to school and here you've got people coming in off of 88 to go into this new dog park that they want to put in <clears throat> and that's to me a liability because a lot of people don't take consideration of the leash law. Um, huh. it, it, and, you know, it's, I've lived here 11 years and I have seen so many dogs off leash in just the field itself. And now you've got this dog park they want to put behind all these homes that are considered, you know, it's quiet, it's peaceful, you know, and I, I, I've seen that roadway flood so many times and I'm like, one day that's just all going to give away because the water is seeping underneath, whether they pave it or not it's going to just collapse and it's going that the, that pond is going to just run its course so whether they want to pave it or not is um just a band-aid waiting for a fatality to happen um that's my opinion um two i, I think as homeowners here on 88 that we should stand up and and uh, take our rights as homeowners that we have. Yeah, we, we all own a piece of property back there. Um, I, I totally am apprehended to this whole dog park thing. Um, you know, I, I've got friends on this. I, I'm at the end of the cul sac So I've got friends who are homeowners on the direct side of where that dog park's gonna be. And it's just, to me, the whole thing is just ridiculous. They wanna put the, the opening to the dog park right off of our street. Not to mention, we've got Costco coming right in. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the amount of traffic that it's all gonna create is just ridiculous. Um, you know, we've taken it up with um, the fire department down here because of the off street parking um, that people use. Um, you know, and I'm sorry, and I've, I brought this to the, the superintendent fire department that if a fire truck needed to get down 88 to get to our homes, we're, I, we're out of luck, literally out of luck because there's so much off street parking that a fire truck couldn't get through. Now you want to bring in a dog, a dog park um, and that dog park opening will be on our street on 88th from what I was told. Um, it's just, I don't know what you guys are being fed. I've lived here for 11 years and 
I am firsthand being told that this is what I'm being told. Um, so, you know, if this dog park comes into hand, um, you know, I pray for everybody's safety because nobody respects the off-leash um, off leash law. Uh, nobody cares about putting their dog on a leash and quietly walking their dog to the dog park. Well, that's not going to happen. You know, managing your child walking down 20th or down 88th to 20th to catch the bus and you've got all these dogs going into the dog park at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning for that early morning sunrise and uh, somebody isn't putting their dog on a leash and your child's being attacked. So, you know, I, I, I just, I'm totally apprehended yeah. by the whole entire thing. It, I have it just, a question for Stephanie. Yeah. Since I, I don't know that area very well, are you saying kids walk from, they have to walk through that whole park to get to their school bus? They Is walk, that what you're talking they about? They actually walk down 88th down to 20th to catch the bus. And which, so. Oh, 88th. Actually, okay, I'm with you. So okay. once they make it a walking trail back here, all the kids will walk that to go to Cavalero. It's a shortcut. I know, I know so, they do. So even more kids will walk it once it's a paved trail, if they can get it all the way through, like they're talking, it'll mm -hmm. be all the kids. And then with dogs, you're right, Stephanie. And yeah. um, so it, it's not really, it, it's kind of crazy to me as well. Um, it's a whole safety issue. I, I, I have neighbors that have lots of kids that walk down to the end of the street to get on school buses. And I'm just like, I pray for these kids because if they put in this dog park and people don't. And people do them. not use leashes. I, I'm out there all the time, every day. Yeah. And, and only a couple people use leashes. Nobody leashes their dog. Right before this meeting started, there was a family and their dog almost ran into my yard. No leash at all in sight. So exactly. that's, dog that's a real up thing. Bite my leg out there. Yeah, thank you. Hi, hi, girl. Um, no, it's you know I'm sure a lot of you have seen me walk my husky through there all the time. I you know, and <laughs> she's 13 years old. She's an old lady, uh, you know. And my dog walker actually had to protect her the other day because two dogs came charging at my dog walker. Had my dog walker had not known what to do in those instances, my dog would have been toast. You know, but she was trained to do what she did. And that was the only thing that saved my dog. Um, it, it, so for me to see a dog park go behind these homes, ruin our, our, our peace and quiet, and, and don't let Snohomish tell you or Lake Stevens tell you that we don't have the right to sell our property, our little piece of property back there for Quail Court. Uh uh, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. They're just being bullies. So, um, I, I, I do, you know, they're, they're talking about the county and parks recreation and uh no I, i'm like i had talked to um somebody in the homish county uh court and they said yes every home in quail court owns a small piece of property that is our property to do what we want with if we want to all join about... and put our own vegetation back i see you leah and do our own, our and plant our own garden. What are we? What are you going to do if we do that? What are you going to do if we all decided to get together, mow down that whole entire piece of property, and we put in our own community garden for 88th Street Drive Southeast? What are you going to do? 
Okay, so thank you, Stephanie. I we we've heard your comments and we appreciate it. And um, I think there's there's a lot more information to come, and and you you'll need to get some of that. But I'm going to move on. Leah's had her hand up for a while. Um, I want to get to Leah here. It's Leah, correct? Yes. Um, so thank you. Sorry, my screen's small, so I got to keep putting my glasses on to read the names. So I'd like a little bit of clarification about that quail court shared space. You had mentioned that most of the plans you were using and this one included includes the acquisition of that space. Are you still planning to acquire that space from us? So the, um, the quail court open space was discussed and, and we had a meeting with your, with your neighborhood regarding pulling that if you had a desire to work into the park plan. Um, with this particular plan um, that, or the, the draft that we've provided, it's not utilizing the quail court open space. Um, oh my God, I just nailed her. The, um, because the, and the area that the trail already exists on is under a section of the quail court open space that has a recorded easement for recreation. So this particular plan um, is not utilizing the quail court open space uh, tract, except for the portions that where the where the existing um, trail exists. So uh, that property would remain ours. Correct. Okay. Um, so then you wouldn't be planning to do anything to the blackberry bushes that are in there, or are you going to create a buffer zone? Because it mentioned critical buffer zone on the plan that I was looking at. And so I wasn't sure what that meant, if you're going to be adding or just keeping as is. The critical area buffer does, uh, there is a, a buffer that exists on the quail <laughs> as well as on the, uh, the city of Lake Stevens parcel that's adjacent to it. So, um, so that is probably the buffer that was that was mentioned. But under this plan, um, the Quail Court open space remains in the ownership of the Quail Court neighborhood. And and if there was um, plans that the Quail Court neighbors wanted to uh, to move forward with, then um, that would be a separate action. Okay, because I noticed that the city came through and put in a property marker in my yard. Um, and so I was wondering whether you were looking at acquiring part of my yard since it's a little bit into the quail court area and what you're planning to do with that. Um, and also on the um, plan, there's a blue line that I'm not sure what that represents. And so I wanted to ask what that blue line was. It's kind of a um, angle. It, yes. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Yes. So uh, in answer to your question, we did have our uh, parcel and um, the critical area surveyed. So as far as the um, the stake that's in your yard, I don't know if that's a property pin or if that's a critical area um, marker, we would have to visit you on site to determine that. Um, there was no um, additional properties that the city was looking to acquire. I think I'm familiar with where your home is. Um, up in that area. So if there is a marker out there, it's probably delineating an existing property line or a, um, a critical area marker. Um, the blue line on there is just simply a CAD line that's used for angulation. It has nothing to do with the, with the purpose of the, of the trail. Okay. Um, I'd also like to express my apprehension for the dog park. Um, I don't see why we need to move it. It doesn't seem like it's a better position here other than it would be under your control, but I think that we should try to pursue keeping it at Cavalero. I'm definitely in that um, camp. Um, mm -hmm. The picnic play area that you have um, identified there, are you going to have um, picnic shelters or I saw you had some pictures of a gazebo or um, what are your plans for that area? Is it going to accommodate um, many people or? This would be, <clears throat> this would be a, a small-ish type of a play area and picnic structure. Um, the gazebo plan that was uh, attached is kind of the preferred natural feel of the elements. That is, um, because it's underneath the power lines, there are material restrictions. And so wood is allowable there. Again, we would have to have this height survey 
to see the, the exact you know, style and exact location of those. And that is always uh, dictated by the utilities that are existing in the areas. But we would be looking uh, at the play area and, um, and a picnic shelter in that vicinity. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Leah. I got a couple of things that I'd like to say. Um, I, I coach for Lake Stevens Youth Football. I have for the past five years. And I live off of 88 there. Um, we, the problem with the dog park, we've practiced at uh, the community park, which I know is the county, um, Loxloy now that you guys have purchased that, you know, um, LSMS, we literally have to go. And there's about five or six coaches that have to pick up dog poop before we start our practices because the kids step in it, hands, you know, what, what have you. What if you guys put the ballparks at the beginning towards 20th and then put the dog park towards the end of it, that's not going to save any problem of the dogs being used in the, in the ballparks. Now, if you go to community park, I can guarantee you right now, there's probably at least 10 dogs running around there off leash and the owners are throwing balls and, you know, frisbees and everything like that. How's it going to save from, if you guys turn it into ballparks, how is that going to save having a dog park all the way at the end of the ball when the when the dogs have to tramp right through the ballparks? Well, the, the practice fields are existing out there. They've been there for a while. And um, and I, I think what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of people that utilize the space already for dogs for that purpose. Um, and there isn't a fenced area, you know, the off-leash dog park would be fenced in. So um, it would be a requirement to keep your dog on a leash from any parking lot, you know, any access point till you are through the fences. Of um, at, at this point, we know that, that there's um, fields are just starting to be used. And as those park places are activated and things are built there, then um, you end up with a better signage. There's more, you know, garbage. All of the things that are that are um, that accompany a park property that deter that. And then also, of course, there's more um, presence by the Lake Stevens police. So there are other sites where there are other park features that are in the same vicinity as a dog park. We have those throughout our county or state, you know. And there are areas that, that they do coexist and they do it well. So uh, we know that these are compatible uses, um, but I think that because people have used them informally for so long, it appears that they have um, become very lax on their, uh, their etiquette. I was referring to, so like you go to uh, community field right now, community park. You go there and we've been practicing in between there and Lost Lori, you know, what have you. But the problem, the, and LSMS, but the problem of it is, is community park says no dogs allowed on the fields at all. LSMS says no dogs allowed on the field at all. And the Lost Lori that you guys purchased says no dogs allowed in the park. What are you guys going to do? Keep, I'm all for the, the ball fields, I'm at the park. I think it's a great idea. If the city needs that, it, you know, here, the dog park, you're going to have people in a parking lot. They're going to get out, let their dogs out the leash because they see a big wide open field. And then they're going to start walking down the trail and they're going to put them in, in, you know, and have them go. I bet you half the people don't even make it to the dog park before yeah. they're done letting their dogs do their business and everything in the ballpark. And that's the, this, the problem that I'm trying to, uh, iterate with you guys is everyone just takes their dogs out everywhere and just lets them poop and everything like that and then we're the ones that get stuck having to pick it all up pick up mm -hmm. the bags of poop that people have left on the fields and everything exactly. else not including the donuts and the parking lots and everything like that they, i don't see how putting a dog park at the end of a couple of baseball fields or whatever soccer fields or whatever you guys are going to do with them i don't see how putting a dog park at the very end of that is going to be beneficial to anybody using that those fields. Yes, thank you. There, a couple of things that you mentioned. There is the one a Loxloy field. I don't. I'm not familiar with that. The city hasn't purchased anything in Loxloy. Um, the county park is, uh, or Lake Stevens Park is a county park. 
Um, and you're right, there's going to be people that break the rules. Lake Stevens uh, School District has always had a no dog policy. And obviously if there's dog waste on the field, people are, are breaking the rules. Um, mm -hmm. I can tell you that yeah. we have um, enforcement. We can increase our enforcement at the site and we can increase um, you know, the signage and we can put out dog waste removal stations. Yeah. We can um, provide a place where, where dogs can recreate off leash that's adjacent to. I, I think, like I mentioned before, they, this area has been used um, you know, non-officially in this capacity for so long. I think that it will take a little bit of time to retrain people but I do believe that, um, that it can be done. You're still gonna have people that are gonna break the rules and they're gonna break the law. It is a law in anywhere in Lake Stevens, you know, that, that your dog is on a leash unless it's in your, you know, your yard, any public space. I just, okay. don't, see, I just don't see how you guys are gonna have a parking lot where a bunch of ball fields are gonna be and then have them truck through the fields and everything to get to the dog park. It's quite a lot. It's it's a lot. You're looking at about a mile hike from where you guys, where the parking lot is at now, to where you guys have the suggested dog park going. You're looking at almost a mile, close to it. And then during the winter time, this whole this whole road floods. You're about two feet under underwater, and I don't understand where. I I've watched it for the past five years coaching for Lake Stevens, and I've watched it to where the the people get out of their car, they just let their dog go. And they grab their, you know, frisbees or balls or whatever, and they just start walking onto the field. And they just start throwing them. Dog takes mm -hmm. a poop, couple areas. You know, we had last year we had two kids get bit because some dog came up and ran up to try to steal the football, and the kid leaned down to grab it, and he got bit. You know, and if we're having the field there, and then we got a truck, you know, uh, three quarters of a mile or whatever to get to the dog park, how is that beneficial to have the 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 ball parks, the ball fields? It doesn't do anything. You might as well just turn the dog park and have it right there and not even worry about having a park. I've actually had uh, yelled at people to put their dogs on leashes while I walk through and, and with my dogs and they totally ignore me. And I like, well, if you don't want to put your dog on a dog leash, I'm going to call the police and they don't care. They just don't care. Hey, Jill, I just, just saw that for future to Jill Lochloy is actually school district property that is uh, out there kind of behind the Lochloy grocery out there where our girls play uh, soccer. So I think you're, I, so saying, that's, you know, that's, like, that's and, school district. Oh. Yeah, that's that school district field. That's where soccer holds most of their programs just for for reference but you're right my my kids play soccer out there and it's it's a it's a big ordeal i appreciate Chris, i see uh, i see someone oh, oh, kayla or okay. wait a minute kayla, yeah, yeah. kayla i know you're not kayla but that says kayla so yeah, i'm i'm kayla's husband so um i agree with uh the gentleman that was on hillary's phone um, my son my son played uh football for lake stevens too 100%. There's dog crap all over every field we've ever been to. 100%. I look over there, people let their dogs out of the cars. First thing they do, let them out. And then they look around to see if anybody's seen them. And then they keep letting their dog run around. And second, the only reason I see you guys, or I guess Snohomish County, moving that dog that dog field or the, the play area, because you guys, there's a there's a pretty good chunk of property that's over there right now. Um, the dog park was set off, I believe 20th, what about 30, 40 feet. Um, and then behind that dog park, it's kind of wet over there too. And then um, there's quite a bit of property behind the dog park as well. We I've been over there before. Um, but the only reason that I could see, and correct me if I'm wrong, but over here, you guys look at underneath the power lines like it's unbuildable property. You guys can't throw a shopping center up over here. Sure. You can't throw a Walmart up. You can't throw a Safeway. You can't throw a 7-Eleven up over here. No. Now, over there on the corner, right across the street from the Trussell Station, just like all the other houses have, that have been going in, they're collecting property tax. The, the Costco that's coming in over here, 
it's going to collect a lot of revenue. Over there, it's all buildable property. You can throw a shopping mall up over there and it's going to collect more revenue for Lake Stevens. Well, dog park's not doing that. So you can get that dog park out of there, put it somewhere where there's unbuildable, deemed unbuildable property and throw a shopping mall up over there. You don't see the impact of all these neighbors that are on this Zoom right here um, and what it does to their everyday life. They come home from work, paying property tax every single year, going to work for the American dream, whatever that is. But they wanna come home and they just wanna relax in their backyard without a dog barking all day long. Yes. I went and spent X amount of dollars building my back porch, remodeling my house. I want to come home from work and relax on my back deck without a dog barking all day long. That's on a Saturday. I want to relax and have a barbecue without a dog barking all day long. If I had a dog bark in my backyard, that would push me to sell my house, unfortunately. And I don't want to sell my house because I like my neighbors. I like my neighborhood. I like where I live. I want to continue to pay property taxes. That dog park that's over there, it's not in somebody's backyard. It's not in a neighborhood. It's on a main road. It's not going to disrupt anybody. So for you guys to move that dog park that's already there, that's already established, to put up a shopping center or whatever you guys are going to do to collect more revenue is really a kick in the face to everybody that's already established in Lake Stevens that are paying property taxes, in my opinion. So the Cavalier is a park property, and that is the county's park property, and it has been um, always planned for as a park property, to my knowledge. Um, there is no just in two thousand five developing a right. So when I when I moved into this house, you guys keep saying that that it was a park, and so it was a crack house on twentieth. That <laughs> yeah. Um, it was actually a crack house on 20th that the cops had to keep going into because my neighbors kept getting their car stolen. And I had to actually put up a camera a couple months ago because my cars keep getting broken into. But it was actually where your guys' parking lot is right now was a fairly large crack house. And we had to, it actually got torn down a few years ago. Um, what that field was, um, if that field was behind that house, if the homeowner of that house owned the field, I don't know, but as, as, yeah. long, as, I've, as long as I've lived here, um, that house was never used, that field wasn't used. Mm -hmm. I've lived here for 20 years, over 20 years, and there was a soccer field, there's a trail, a, a driveway on the other side of the house that went back in, and kids used those soccer fields for practice all the time. So mm. there was a public park space there while the crack house was still in front of it. Uh, that so was a really long time ago. I've lived here for 25, over 25 years and that soccer field wasn't used. I mean, I was a kid when it was still being used. It was over it was it was it was it was three, four years I lived here. We they heard it all the moved. time. They're right behind our house. They were out yeah. there playing. There were maybe two years they didn't use it at Light Fallow. And then they regraded it. So my, my question is, is the lady just stated that um, it's always been park, but according to somebody that said earlier that it was only a developed park in 2005. How can it always be a developed or meant to be a developed park all the way back to where the dog park's going to be? Mm. Well, this was just right behind my house and didn't go that far back. No, exactly. Yeah, but now suddenly big. it's been supposedly going to be a park forever. This, the city purchased the portion, uh, the parcel that's behind the existing um, uh, practice fields uh, a few years ago. The, the fields themselves, the parcel that is underneath the power lines that has um, hosted the field has hosted that, um, that use for a very long time. So you, so the city of Lake, so my understanding, city of Lake Stevens bought Bonneville Power easement rights which is an access for their trucks to maintain their power lines from no. Bonneville Power? The properties no. underneath the power lines are parcels, just as the parcel that your home sits on. It does have an easement recorded across it that's the um, utility easement 
for their transfer. Sure. The underlying parcel uh, is still has uh, ownership. So the, the parcel that the county owned where the practice fields are, that yeah. transferred to the city of Lake Stevens through annexation. The parcel yeah. that is just north of that, which um, extends to where the off-leash dog park is proposed, that parcel was purchased by the city several years ago. To be I have a question about it. Uh -huh. I have a question about the easement of like mm -hmm. said power tower right behind me in my backyard. There is a 20 foot easement. I know that you cannot fence in because it's right here out, like right off my deck is where you want to put this dog park, right? But mm -hmm. I know that there's at least 20 feet from the actual tower itself that you have to be off. Isn't there an easement from somebody's fence line that there has to be a certain amount before you can put a dog park? I researched a lot and cannot find anything for Washington State. Like, I racked my brain trying to find this out because I don't want it here. I'm going to be honest. But um, there's, I just couldn't find it my own self. But is there some amount of easement off of somebody's property line before you can actually put a dog park? Not I read I in other states like 100 feet. There's usually a, a setback for a building for some type of a building structure for fire code and zoning code. Um, but uh, for park use property, there is um, some provisions for a vegetative buffer or screen using, um, you know, varying landscaping supplies or, uh, you know, on the opposite side, yeah, on the, the city side of uh, your existing fence line. Um, but that's the only um, setback or buffer that I'm aware of. Another thing about it too is every time my dogs go outside, somebody's walking by and my dogs bark because of said crack house that used to be there. Guys would come walking through my yard. So I let my dogs, my dogs think they're supposed to bark and it keeps people away and it has worked, right? So when this dog park goes in kitty corner from my house and my yard, my dogs are going to bark because that's what they think they're supposed to do. And it's going to be like, I have, and I don't like them to bark. I make them come inside almost every time someone walks by which is really obnoxious because sometimes it's eight o'clock in the morning and I've just put my dogs out and they've got to pee. They've been holding it all night and here comes somebody walking, you know, now it's going to be massive more of that. You know, we live next door to her and she's telling the truth. Sorry. The truth. <laughs> I'm always, my dogs come in all the time they bark. to me because they, they live here. This is their yard, you know, and once these dogs True. are here all the time like that, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be, and I don't want to get a ticket for my dog barking because every two seconds there's a new person walking by you know like it's crazy there used to never be anybody back here ever I've lived here since I was 10 years old it's a long time let me tell you nobody came back here ever hey there we have blue heron and coyotes yeah. and mm -hmm. all the okay. things back here deer like everything cool and then it's gonna be a dog park right yeah. outside the bedroom window Hey, Hillary, one thing you got to add on to that is yeah. all the people that work for the parks department and all them, they don't have a dog park in their backyard and they never will. I know. Oh, come on. Well, and also, okay, so I would like to, hold on. I think we've heard your guys' concerns about the dog park. I mean, I, I think now we're kind of just repeating ourselves. I mean, there's been we some great, that, and I, Hillary, I, I think I'm hearing you, and there's a couple members here that I'm I'm pretty good friends with through the sports. I've been playing sports here since <clears throat> way before any of you guys lived there. I remember playing baseball on that particular parcel. So I I, I think we hear your guys' voice. Um, if there's something new to add, I'd like to hear that. If not, we still have a, a fairly long agenda we got to get to and I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm cutting anybody off but we're, we're starting to kind of repeat ourselves and and I've heard it and um I'd like to go to Mr. Davis Connor Davis and then Russ I I think you raised your hand did I see that too Russ I did if I could just maybe um jump ahead and just as a point of order this really hadn't been intended to be a a public meeting for comment tonight we were really just trying to get the park board's feelings on the next alternatives before we schedule the public meeting. So with that, we would still definitely like to hear from the park board uh, 
this evening. Thank you, Russ Connor. Yeah, and my, my question is really, um, should the city move to the point of building this, this uh, leash dog park, does that mean that the county then would kind of decommission the, the dog park that's, you know, 150, 200 yards away? Uh, what's, has the, has the county planned that? And I guess the follow-up would that be, if the city does not build this component of it, will the county continue to maintain the, the nearby dog park? No, they won't, they don't care. So I, I don't think we know the answer, Russ, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. bounce a little bit off you because I know you and I have talked and one of the reasons we were looking at this is future development of Cavallaro for um, potentially sports fields and stuff like that is how this all got started, correct, Russ? That, that is correct. So just for benefit of the, the audience, uh, Lake Stevens and Snohomish County have been coordinating for a number of years on the development of Cavallaro um, Park. The first build out phase was the, the skate park, the basketball courts, the parking area with other planned improvements in the future. Um, there has been a discussion, is it appropriate to move the dog park to another location? And as uh, Chairman Jones suggested, that would open up that park for more intensive sports field uses. None of those decisions have been made. Um, Snohomish County is not intending to close down their dog park portion at this point, but it is an option that we're moving forward with and continue to have those conversations. So that might that might answer some of the questions on on why this was initially um, started at looking at a at a place. So do I and I I and I apologize I don't use Zoom that much but Daniel I see there's a hand does that mean you're raising your hand for a question? Oh yes sir. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, thank you. Hi, neighbors. Uh, let me get my camera on here. Hey, okay. Hi, guys. We're new in the neighborhood, but um, we were actually very excited when we heard there was going to be a park next door. Uh, we didn't know it was going to be a dog park. <laughs> so that's okay, though. I, I feel like, you know, the city is going to do whatever is going to happen. So we just have to like sort of make the best of it. My question would be, is there a way to separate the ballpark with like a fence possibly? Uh, and just that way prevent, you know, dogs coming in there because it would be a sign and a door. Sort of like the dog park next to the skating park is separated. There's a clear entrance and, you know, something like that. Like, does the city have a budget to, you know, gate those two separate from each other? I think that would help address some of the concerns I've heard so far. And I, my second question, uh, and that's all I have is, are we able to, you know, our backyard fence, are we able to build a door there into the park directly or would that be some like zoning issue? I'm just curious. Jill, Russ. The, um, the comment about separating the uses, that's definitely one of the design details that will be worked out. The, um, if the dog park goes there, it would be fully fenced um, around it. So there is a separation for that off dog component. The proposal would actually have a couple of areas to have um, what you call, you know, shy dogs or older dogs that could be separated from the, the larger um, population. But yes, the, the dog area would be fenced off. If you look at um, some current county parks, and that's the one I sort of think about, um, the ball fields are separated, they're fenced, and the dog park does have a, an access quite like this. So um, yes, separation of uses would be important to the success of this, and we have to see what we can do in that area. So I appreciate that comment. So what about opening up, you know, our fence with a door into the park? Is that like doable or, or, or there's a zoning issue? There wouldn't be a zoning issue, but that's probably a conversation um, for out of a public forum. Thank you. 
Thank you, Danielle. And I saw another Chris, hand. Do you somewhere. see Lucas? No, there you it is. Lucas? I say, yeah, so I just saw it. I knew I saw another hand. Lucas, yeah, go ahead. So I, maybe I, I missed it. Uh, is the city's decision to move forward with uh, options two and three, or rather not try to acquire, uh, I guess, the, the neighborhood property? Is that final? Are you guys walking away from that? You're not going to, you have no intentions to, to purchase uh, the Quail Hollow property? Or is it still on the table? I'm not, I'm not clear on that, I guess. So, Lucas, coming out of the first two meetings um, and a lot of staff time after that, we had engaged that neighborhood. There wasn't an interest um, at that point of having the city purchase that property or gift mm -hmm. that property. And so the city moved forward with the alternative that excluded the Quail Court open space. There's still a couple of issues we're working out um, with the easements and what are the, the rights on top of those easements, but no, the city's preferred option at this point does not include the Quail Court property. Thank you. Okay, uh, Carl. Yep, let's move forward. Yes, I was just gonna say, if we don't have anything else, I'd like to move on. I'd, I'd like to actually bounce back to our action items. Sorry, give me a second. I lost my glasses here. Um, I would like to move, jump back into our action items on our board member nominations for the water feature wall artist selection. Yes, so um, the city is preparing an RFP uh, for in, um, in partnership with the Arts and Parks Foundation to procure an artist to, um, to put together uh, a mural for the seat wall in North Cove. When we put the RFP out, we anticipate um, interviewing several different artists uh, that submit for the RFP. And we would like um, part of the park board representation to participate in that interview committee. So if we could um, get two nominations to sit on that, and then the Arts and Parks Foundation representation will be uh, part of that interview committee as well. Jill, I have, a, I have a question about the interviewing. Is it gonna be during business hours or after business hours? Have you decided yet on that? Generally, they're done during business hours. Okay. And, um, the foundation, I had volunteered for the foundation and we decided to, um, that perhaps I might get um, selected for the, with the board. And so I'm not on the foundation. Well, I was, I was liking if, if Connor is up for it, I was going to nominate Connor, but with with it being so the interviews jill are going to more likely be during business hours during the day or late day before we nominate somebody i want to make sure my screen keeps moving around i'm trying to look at you make sure that um connor would be or whoever we nominate would be able to do it yep my my challenge would be while i'd love to participate um i it, it's tough to commit to anything where there might be a, uh, an issue with timing. Uh, you know, during the course of the day, the earliest that I would be available would be 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, that's with students leaving my class at 3.20. We can probably accommodate that. Okay. And they, would these be Zoom meetings also, or would, would we have an per, actual personal meeting to look at his stuff? They would be Zoom meetings. Okay. Do we need to nominate two people? Yes, please. I'd like to this nominate. Oh, I'm sorry. I just heard somebody. Sorry, Can go ahead. I'd like to nominate uh, Connor and Tina. I second. Connor and Tina, are you both okay with that? Sure. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, I'm right. Can I notes. make a suggestion? Um, I, I really appreciate the neighbor that put something in our mailbox. Otherwise, we would not have known about this meeting. Is it possible to get on uh, some type of email 
list. Yes, Daniel, can you email me at the city? I'm Jill in the in, uh, the parks coordinator and I would be happy to add you to the, um, the email distribution. Could you post your email in the chat here? Absolutely. Thank you. You bet. So as we move forward here in our meeting, we're on, we're gonna be moving on to uh, part two of our um, presentation on changing needs in the parks division. Um, at this point, I'm gonna, I, I apologize. I'm gonna have Roger take over. As I said, tonight's opening night of Little League and I just got a text, my kid's already in the second inning, wanna know why I'm not at the baseball field yet. <laughs> so Roger and I, Mary, I saw that. <laughs> he, trust me, he's not gonna let me live it down. Um, so I talked to Roger and I talked to Jill. Uh, Roger and I are going to meet up later. He's going to catch me up to speed on uh, what was discussed. He kind of already knows my thoughts. Um, and I talked to Jill. So at this point, um, if it's all right with everybody, I'd like to step out, run down to the ball field real quick and let Roger take over. Um, thanks again, everybody, for all your information. And I can't wait till our next meeting and we get to start moving forward on some more of this stuff. So uh, Roger, it's all yours and everybody have a great night. Good luck. You too. Great, right, Chris. Thanks. Have a great game. Thanks, Chris. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we're on to the discussion item of the uh, presentation on changing needs to the parks division. And um, Jill posted on her uh, email to us that she wanted us to come up with some ideas and stuff uh, as far as a mission and a vision statement. And I talked to Jill earlier today, and I think that you really have to have a vision before you make a, a mission. And I think to me, it should be open discussion for the parks board members to, to come up with a vision and then from the vision, create the mission. Any comments? Well, I would say, Roger, that um, that is true if we're doing it for the parks division. If we're coming up with the mission for the park board, which was my impression based on reading the minutes, was that you can do a mission because we didn't, we're advisory board, we don't need a vision. But since now I know it's for the division and we're coming up with some ideas, I would agree that um, a vision needs to be made. But I still think um, with what I sent out that we are not the appropriate group to come up with a vision because it, the, the council knows what their vision is and they need to tell us what their vision is. And I don't think we really can give good advice on what the vision is because we, I don't know, that's my thought. Thank you, Tina. The, um, the vision for the for the parks division, uh, the city council will definitely have an input portion of it, <clears throat> but the purposes are what we envisioned for this um, particular exercise were to really um, incorporate some of the, the changing demographics that's happening um, and also involve our parks pros, which are our parks board <clears throat> in setting that, um, that those goals and mission. And then of course, you know, getting the input from, um, from the city council. But I know that city council has um, always um, uh, trusted the park board as um, kind of experts in the field as uh, for their input. And I know that they enjoy hearing um, your input. And so I think that um, for the purpose of this was also just to kind of unify um, the park board around a common um, vision and goal for the division as it grows in response to those changing demographics. And that understand. helps me understand what you're needing from us. Absolutely. And when I read um, when I read what you sent, uh, thank you for sending that. And I and I did know I completely understood where you were coming from. <clears throat> um, can, 
Can I ask Marcus and uh, Ms. Dickinson it would their approach to what Tina just said? I mean, do you th see it more of a visionary for the council or for the parks board? Marcus. I'm right here. Okay. So I, I get to talk first because I okay. started, huh, Marcus? <laughs> okay. So I, I just want to say that, wow, you guys just went through a rough meeting here. Uh, I believe in what you're doing, and I trust you to come up with that vision slash mission. And I believe I would support what you're doing because you're the guys that are guys and gals that are doing all the work. Uh, and uh, doing uh, amazing, amazing work to make Blake Stevens shine, which to me is, I mean, really, it's a beautiful place where we live, and you are doing everything to give people the opportunity to enjoy the, the joy, the beauty of this place. So I think you guys, I give it back to you. I'm passing it over to you, and you get my support no matter what, just saying. Thanks, Mary. Okay, Anyone Marcus. Anyone else like to make it? Marcus, are you I still think, there? Or? Okay. One comment is, I think uh, a vision is a great idea first. And I would just say, hopefully it's a vision everybody can get behind and then that will be very helpful. So whatever it is, um, you know, hopefully it has some holistic, altruistic or, or, or just such. Just a point uh, of clarification, I'm not taking any more citizen comment at this point. This is a time for the park board to be having their conversation, so. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I thought you were looking for feedback. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I did have just a, it's a, a bit of information um, that I was going to prevent, uh, prevent really present, and then <laughs> have a I have an open discussion because I know that um, that some of you have worked on um, some vision statements. Um, I did speak with uh, Roger earlier regarding the vision, and I and I think that that approach is a good approach if we develop the vision. The vision is really that um, that uh, altruistic view of how we we want to see um, parks in Lake Stevens. And then the mission is really the nuts and bolts of how we're going to get there. So I think that um, developing that vision would definitely guide the mission conversation. And I think that um, uh, that if the park board uh, chose to go at it that way, that would, it would be, um, you know, completely fine with staff. So. Yeah, I've, I, uh, for a living, this is what I did was created mission and vision statements. And it is correct to do the vision first. Fantastic. Yeah, I would agree as well. And uh, Tina, I read your vision and your mission statement and I appreciate you kind of putting it out there ahead of everybody else too. So uh, just knowing that we're trying to remain in line with the city council's vision and mission statement as well, I think, it, I think it'd be uh, fun to kind of lay out some next steps and some action, you know, just some, uh, how how are we going to uh, work on first this vision statement and then and then go forth? So, um, is there any ideas I'd like to hear? Because this kind of is an exciting uh, piece for my first day after being <laughs> sworn in. So can I? Mary's speak got her hand up. Yeah, I do. Um, so I don't know if that vision, Tina, that they're talking about was shared with folks like myself but I don't have any problem with collaborating with you between the park board and the city council. I'd be more than pleased to collaborate with you, see what you're thinking, and then you know, maybe give some input because the more people that chime in here, right Colton? And these new kids on the block out here, oh my goodness, this is your first meeting? <laughs> okay. It isn't always like this, just got to say, uh -huh. but I would love to see, I would love Tina to see uh, what that, that vision was that you put forth uh, so that I could, I'd be willing to make some comments on it. Just you know, I'll, email it to me. I'll send it to you, Mary. It's not a vision. It's a mission because a I mission. thought it was okay. for the park board. I, oh, okay. And well, whatever. so I don't, I don't have a vision. I thought about it, but I didn't <laughs> write one. Well, whatever you think comes first or second, anybody really here, just feel free to send it to me. I do respond to emails, so watch out. I'll send you what I did and you can see what I did. 
Okay, thank you. That's perfect. Thank you. So were we planning on kind of reading these off in the meeting and going over that, or was it more of a email response? What what was the 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 medium that you wanted us to use, Jill? I, I think that an open discussion is great. Um, I did have a brief presentation. If you wanted me to go ahead and run through that, I can do that with you, or if you want to dive right into the discussion, um, whatever is the um, is the Do we have a starting point? Well, are we, we using our, our current our current one as a starting point? Absolutely. Okay. I think that our, our current vision statement, I think it's it's framed as a as a mission statement right now, is very vision oriented. So I think that that's that's definitely fair. Um, so do you want me to to just jump into my brief presentation? Yeah. Well, yes, Joe. Sure, go ahead, yeah, please. I, I think I'm going to share my screen. I think that that is um, probably the easiest way. Come on. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. But the, um, I apologize, but I don't have the um, PowerPoint. I'm just doing it from the, from the packet. But I just wanted to give, um, just for the, uh, for the new members, I know that you attended at the last meeting, but just a brief, um, you know, history of kind of why we're we're doing this and why we think it would be um, beneficial to to um, look at these things as we move forward. I have a beautiful picture that I've captured of North Cove Park for those of you, of course, that remember what it looked like prior to any of the construction. Yeah. You can see, um, just kind of where where it's going, where it's you know, where it's been. Um, and North Cove Park, as you know, I, I worked next to it for, for several years. And there's our city pier as it goes out onto the lake that in the same city pier that we have um, currently. Um, I know that uh, this particular park was just, it was really underutilized. I worked there. Um, I walked through it. If I wanted to take a phone call or, you know, some of us at the city, we would, um, we would walk around there at our lunch. But the Sidewalks were pretty buckled. You couldn't wheel anywhere if you were in a wheelchair or in a, any type of a walker or stroller around the area, and it didn't have a playground. So um, beautiful, beautiful vistas, but really not an active park. So we do have some changing demographics in Lake Stevens. Um, we touched last time on growth. So when the park board was founded, our city's uh, population was around 8,000 people. And um, that was the area that you see where it says uh, 2002 in the green area. That, um, that was the entirety of the city limits at that time. So in 2020, our population was estimated at 34,150. And we have 3,000 people uh, that will be part of our fair uh, city in the Southeast annexation. And it will, um, around May, 2021, uh, it could grow to uh, 38,000. And uh, of course the long range plan for the city is to grow over 50,000 uh, people in the next decade. So when we're considering uh, the mission and vision, we wanna of course pay attention to the changing demographics of Lake Stevens. And also, you know, we touched just um, briefly on that um, in the meeting earlier, but uh, we know that the mayor and city council have placed an emphasis on economic development and really activating those parks. Um, the population in the state park planning principle calls for the highest and best use of the park property based on community needs. So that also touched just a bit on the, on the meeting that we just had uh, with the community is that we really have a duty to activate those, um, those park properties. If they're purchased or um, acquired for the intent of uh, parks, we have, um, we have a duty to provide that to the community. And then also our state goals and policies are updated from time to time. And uh, those are put forth by state parks. And these are the state goals and priorities <clears throat> um, from state parks uh, that have updated a couple of their, um, their goals. So sustain and grow the legacy of parks, trails, and conservation lands, improve equity of parks, trails, and conservation lands, uh, get youth outside, plan for culturally relevant parks and trails to meet the changing demographics, and assert uh, recreation and parks as a vital, and conservation as a vital public service. So um, 
they've definitely broke out the different categories now where um, they have parks, trails, and conservation because um, they didn't, they felt like that um, conservation was a, an important aspect to any well rounded park uh, repertoire. So, um, making our Communities great. That was just kind of um, where we I talked about last time of how you know our aspirational thoughts of how we're going to develop these uh, the mission and vision, and uh, for today's purposes, just sticking to that vision. The current um, Lake Stevens vision statement uh, as a jumping off point is the city of Lake Stevens will create diverse recreational opportunities for all ages to enjoy parks, trails, and activities, and local events throughout the community and with expanded access to Lake Stevens. Um, I did give some examples of it, and then also um, I think we'll just focus on the vision portion of it for today. So they're, as I stated before, they're really aspirational. This is where you want your altruistic park uh, division to be and uh, generally uh, greater than five years in the future. So um, kind of how are we, what do we want to see in our parks? What do we want to see of our offerings as far as recreation and other other um, park functions? Jill, can I jump in for just a minute? Of course. Thank you. So um, one of the things um, um, I guess don't need to overthink this whole process but um, as Jill and I have been preparing your packets and we come to you and ask you to make um, recommendations onto the city council and as our community's growing, changing, you heard the voices tonight, what we're really hoping to do is just um, almost create a cheat sheet for you um, or a way, a lens to look at projects that you're gonna make your recommendations through. Um, Jill and I obviously are intimate um, uh, involved with the needs assessment, the survey, so we know all of that data back and forth. That informs our decisions when we come to you, and I think that maybe sometimes um, for you it would be helpful as a board to have a statement that you go back to, again, that reflects what we know from the needs assessment, from the surveys we do, from the communications we have. So again, to me, that's why it's sort of important to have this conversation, not to overthink it, but just that you have a lens when you go into make decisions or recommendations then that we can carry on. And likewise, when we bring um, actions to you, we're doing the same thing. Yep, we've looked at this, we've looked at this, and now we're all in agreement that this is what we're doing as staff, this is what you're doing as a board, and then this is then it gets handed off to council for their action. So if that helps when you think about how to frame this, again, it's a, a tool for all of us, um, and especially you who don't get into the nitty gritty as much as staff, but you're gonna have a common point. Yeah, did this park you're talking about have an equity portion? Did it have a conservation portion? Did it go back to the city's needs assessment or surveys for activating the parks? Does it have a component for economic development that you know benefits the city? So that's just sort of my input as you think about how to frame the vision. And again, that's aspirational. And as Jill suggested, then we can come back to the mission, which then is the five-year plan, which is, okay, we have this assessment, we have our capital facilities plan. So which parks are we gonna prioritize? What functions of parks are we gonna prioritize and how do we get to them in a, a five to 10 year period? That will really be the, the difference between the two. Thanks, Russ. Thank you. So really this was just to spark the conversation um, to get you thinking about, uh, you know, what you'd like to see in parks and what values uh, the city of Lake Stevens should consider when looking at projects. This always helps frame, you know, if someone approaches the city and would like to, um, to talk about a particular project or we'd like to propose a, pro a particular project, this helps guide, you know, what is, is it consistent with where we want to see uh, the division go? So with that, I will um, I'll open it up. I would I'd love to hear a, a robust discussion amongst the um, the park <laughs> members. Oh, 
or suggestions or, or, and you know, if it's a matter of a bullet points of, of issues that you find um, are, are important and that you would like to elevate, we can put in the verbiage, we can do a bulleted type format if that's easier for some people. And then we can work on, um, you know, crafting that language around it. So well, Jill, I, I, I'm happy to, oh, go ahead. Oh, thanks, Brian. I was just going to mention, I think that um, usually it helps, like Jill, you mentioned uh, values and, and, and kind of honing in some of those, those core values that the city has, I think is important in order to draft what would be um, the vision statement so that we can kind of break it down almost in bullet points, but then we can elaborate on each of the values and then use that to draft our uh, vision and, and then eventually our mission statement so that our mission statements going to be a little more broad, but we can kind of break it into uh, those finer pieces and eventually those core values that we have. Um, and right. that was my thought. So maybe it's a good place to start would be to outline what are the, the essential values and the core values that we have, and then work into the vision. Exactly. Yep. So for me, I like, I think diversity is good. I think inclusive inclusiveness is important and I think conservation is important um I would say also safety too <laughs> sorry safety. not to interrupt you. yeah no that no now it, those are just some of my off the top of my head yeah That's great. I, I was going to offer to read the vision statement that I put together to see if that would help spark some ideas or yeah. maybe break the ice a little bit um, is it okay if I just go ahead and read it off? Sure. I think it kind of touched on some of the things you guys were talking about as well. And I totally agree that we should, we should definitely put the city values into this. Um, but the vision that I put together really was just the Lake Stevens Parks Department's vision is to provide recre recreational opportunities for all to enjoy both individuals and families. We strive to create the highest quality parks, trails, green spaces, and natural areas in the state. We enhance the quality of life of our residents and visitors by providing beautiful, well-maintained parks and public spaces that are clean, green, and safe for all. We strive to create programming and spaces that will enrich, educate, and enliven our community and provide opportunities for renewal in nature, physical fitness, and emotional and mental growth. Parks are the catalyst to a healthy, happy community. And then just as kind of like a tagline, I put in procure, protect, and preserve. Gee, Brian, you've got it. We're done. Great job, Brian. <laughs> that was good. I, I would I would include also in there, um, you know, the first statement was also ages, you know, of all ages, but I think we should put in something ages and backgrounds because there's the diversity of the city has changed so drastically. And then also, and I talked uh, to Jill earlier about, I'd really like to see Lake Stevens become an environmental known throughout the state for, uh, in their park system because it's something that's new and it's something that's gonna keep happening. If we can be at the forefront of that, I think it's the better for the city also. But those are just two of the oh, things. Hey, and, and I think also we have to you know, commit, commit to uh, uh, sporting events too, because in the original mission and statement, there was mm. nothing about sporting events and there was right. nothing about lake events. And, um, but- yeah because the sporting events will generate money. Cause Russ said, you know, fiscally we, you know, it'd be nice to, to make some money. And if you had a, an, a, a place where you could have tournaments or skateboard tournament, or, you know, well, look what the Ironman, I mean, it brings money into the city. So those are just some of the things uh, that I think, Brian, I think your statement was very nice. I, I totally agree with you in terms of like driving economic development or activation uh, in the economy by providing some of the, uh, my opinion, you know, in, in, in the vision, if we have some of the best recreational opportunities in the, in at least in Homish County, that's definitely going to drive economic development. It's going to drive people and visitors to come to the state or come to the city. Um, we're looking at, I mean, my thought was, would be, you know, you want to be a welcoming space for valued visitors as well, right? Not just the residents, but providing, mm -hmm. um, providing countywide, uh, recreational opportunities, you know, such that aren't available of, in other areas um, that at least within like maybe an hour's drive or something. Right. So being just a special place, I, I just always see Lake Stevens as having the opportunity to be like the recreational capital 
of Snohomish County because of all the amazing, beautiful sites that we have. And one of the other part of the mission that I was putting together was kind of making sure that our built environments in the park are just as beautiful as the uh, natural environments, right? Making sure that everything that we do is of really high quality um, that, you know, people are going to say, recognize Lake Stevens as a destination that's, you know, we have high quality parks and, and lots of uh, active spaces. Uh, and, and we put on events like Aquafest and the Ironman. And, you know, if we had like a pump track or a, a BMX park or, you know, something like that, that you can put on events that people remember, like with Bellingham, you got the ski to sea relay. And that's a huge event every year that brings tons of uh, visitors and, and money into the city. So, um, and I think we have a lot of opportunities to do that here. Anyone else with some suggestions? Yeah, I was just going to mention, I think that uh, everybody had a good point. And the work that I've done uh, recently with Snohomish County, they're really marketing our county as an outdoor experience type of county. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're really doing a lot of pieces to, I mean, even the rebranding of the Tourism Bureau to uh, Seattle North Country. I know there's a lot of probably mixed feelings about that, but what it is is really just more of that outdoor recreation piece. So I think that that's really important. And also in, in Brian's mission statement, I heard a lot of just kind of interdependence and service and, and really kind of being able to be amicable and work with other, other, uh, other, other areas in that sense. So I think that that is part of the appeal of Lake Stevens for me, especially. And it wasn't just the schools and the sports, even though there's a way that we could probably include sports and outdoor recreation. They are related, but to really kind of highlight the fact that this is, you know, one of those beautiful areas that we prioritize that type of recreation. Um, you know, if, if, even if it's just a juncture for um, other folks that are looking to escape to the mountains, I, I'm kind of torn in that sense, but yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that's kind of the holistic. Mm -hmm. I think we gathered a, a lot, <laughs> a lot of good thoughts as to why why uh, why we all live here and why we value our our town and our city here. Yeah, I agree, and we also have one major asset that not very many other communities have, and that's the the lake with incredible views, right? So if we can work that into that piece, that that just that just adds even more to the draw. Right. Anyone else have any more comments? Well, I suggest, can, go ahead. Can we um, take Bryant's and add um, your suggestions, your two ideas and incorporate that somehow? I really, really like Bryant's. I pasted I, it into the chat, so feel free to add on to that. I did. Okay, we'll bring it back with all of the ideas, yeah. Absolutely, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Okay, so do you want to um, put that down for future agenda items, or should you do you want to come up with everyone put a vision statement down? If you can send us a copy of you know everyone, so we can look at it and take pieces and you know bits and pieces and add on or delete. Absolutely. I don't know how you want to work it. So what I did was I copied um, uh, Brian's because he had it already formulated and then I wrote down the bullet points that um, others brought forward. So what I can do is put all of that together and send it out to you to kind of be thinking about it and then mm -hmm. uh, we can discuss it. I can work on some language of incorporating the things that you brought up, incorporating um, Brian's ideas as well. And then, um, and then we can talk about it at our next meeting or okay. in an upcoming meeting. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Anyone else have any other comments on that? If not, we'll work we'll work our way to the parks update from Jill. Sounds sounds like we got it. Did we? Okay. Because usually you, usually you tell us about all the all the parks, but yes, no, I, I am. I'm going to, but oh, I, okay. I, no, I think that we got it as far as the um, the visioning. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. If we want to move on, we can. I'm happy to. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt anybody. Okay. So, um, obviously, you know you're working on mission and visioning. So, uh, North Co. North Co. Park. If you guys notice, the rowing shell house was moved, and they are also working on some. Uh, there's some volunteers at the city that are working on the aesthetics 
um, for the front of the building to kind of make it blend a little bit. Um, so that's been, um, it's been fun to watch that as well as uh, the benches and bike racks were uh, put in on adjacent to the old bridge decking at North Cove Park, just at the entrance uh, right off the multi-use path. So that's exciting. As well as um, they are still looking at a completion date of May for North Cove phase two, uh, which is the uh, playground area, the picnic shelter and the additional parking up there. Uh, Davies Beach, we talked about that briefly, but um, the two docks that are adjacent to the boat launch are going to be replaced this year. Uh, Centennial Woods, um, I think some of you may know, we're working with a, an interested group to develop a pump track at this location. Um, we did receive confirmation that it is a, it is a, consistent use with the conservation easement that's on the property. We talked to Conservation Futures and ironed out um, uh, those some of those smaller details. There is also uh, Puget Sound Energy owns a parcel adjacent to Centennial Woods that um, the city's looking at um, feasibility or uh, discussing the acquisition of that, that parcel. Um, and then, you know, once the conceptual plans are, are um, put together, we'll, we'll bring those in for input. Um, Eagle Ridge, there was a, um, a large volunteer group two weekends ago. Um, well, weekend and a half, I guess. Uh, and they did, uh, they turned over all of the beds. They um, put in a whole bunch of wood chips. Um, there were, I think, 40 or 50 volunteers in that particular group. Um, oh. They came out in uh, in mass to help, and then also a group, the National Junior Honor Society out of Caballero, came out and pulled weeds uh, at the North Cove um, Rain Garden, and those kids just knocked it out of the park. It was an a a <laughs> fabulous time actually to listen to them, and then to also see how much work they got done. They just uh, got an absolute ton of work done. We also had the Interact Club from Lake Stevens School District um, clean the, um, the road that they freshly adopted up by the high school. That was neat. Um, and uh, then kind of the biggest news is we received word from the RCO that our land water conservation application was preliminarily approved for funding. Mm -hmm for the next phase of Eagle Ridge Park, which is the upland portions mm -hmm. of the, the amphitheater and parking. Yay. So that would be a potential kickoff date of um, 2022. So I talked to our grant manager today and he said, there's two ways to say yay. And that is with three dots after it or with an exclamation point. And he said, it, when it's federal money until the money is in your account, it's a dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Sure, that's going to happen. Um, he's he's uh, been fabulous to work with uh, through the process. But um, yeah, really exciting news for Lake Stevens. We've gone out for grant funding on yeah. this before, and um, and uh, so to get it would be would be neat. And um, as far as the master trail plan, I think you guys we've talked about that enough tonight. Uh, <laughs> that first uh, phase rollout will be the 20th Street um, ball field property. Also. We are, uh, our recreation programs are growing in Lake Stevens and uh, adult recreation. We have a couple fitness classes that uh, we have a, um, a instructor teaching. So we have a mixed fit class as well as um, it's, I think she calls it get fit. It's a six week challenge. She's doing several of them. A couple of them start this week and then you'll have um, some more that start in a little bit, but uh, tai Chi starts this coming Sunday at North Cove Park at noon. It's in the covered area behind the mill and it is um, free to the public. So she is just running this course for anyone that, that comes. You'll just have to sign um, a waiver and then for free, you can try out Tai Chi. So, and then she teaches her other class at, um, at Lenny. So with that, um, I... Happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. I had a quick question, Jill. Um, 
with replacing those docks down there at uh, Davies Beach, is what what materials are they going to use for the surface? Is it going to be wood, or will that be like a composite material? So the uh, there are some requirements for light transparency from the Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife, and they like that in the first thirty. But the city has um, designed these using aluminum, and then the open um, flow through decking on top of um, the floats for the entire length. So this is something that will last a lot longer. And um, so hopefully we won't be replacing it anytime soon. And it also uh, is a great product. You don't slip getting off your boat. They don't get um, uh. with algae. And so um, all in all, it's a, it's a sustainable product. And we think it's a, it'll, it'll be a good improvement for Davies. So is it gonna have boat cleats for tying up or? Yes. I'm assuming, yes, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Carl, That's did you it. have a question? Yes, moving on to uh, farmer's market this coming summer. Yes, so the farmer's market will start in June. It will still be on the same day, Wednesdays from three to seven. Okay, thank you. You bet. They're extending their market season just a bit. So it'll be um, a little starting a little bit earlier, I think in the first of June, and then it'll run until the um, uh, Labor Day, I believe. Great. Any more questions for Jill? All right, so uh, board member reports. Does anyone wanna report anything? I My only thing that I would like to say is, um, I've gone by Frontier Heights again, and I noticed there's just one picnic table and it's right next to the basketball court. And no one's gonna use that except for the kids to put their shoes and their coats and their backpacks. I would like to see a couple more picnic tables, one at the north end of the park. And so people that just wanna go have a picnic or something could go out there and enjoy themselves and not be you know, 15 feet away from the basketball court. But other than that- I do know that more were specced out there. So um, I will uh, touch base with uh, Eric and make sure that they didn't grow legs and walk away. Okay. <laughs> That's all I have. Anyone else? I would um, like to um, ask Connor, Brian, and, and Colton to next meeting, not this meeting, next meeting to give, give us a little bit about them, their background, and just to say welcome to them. Okay. Thanks, okay. Tina. I'd, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, does anyone have any future agenda items? I'd like to say that the future agenda items would be this dog park fiasco that we're running into with the neighbors, <laughs> and also the uh, um, the uh, mission statement or the vision statement. Um, that's what I'd like to see. Does anyone else have anything that they'd like to see next week? Or in the future? No. All right, can I no. get a meeting to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. A second. Okay, meeting's adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Night. Good night. Bye. It, it was Thanks, a long everybody. one. Uh, <laughs> Take care, everybody. Yeah. Bye. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>